headed toward Millston. The second largest sawmill operation opened up by the Wisconsin Valley Division Railroad was at McKenna. In a matter of a few months, in the fall of 1888, a town of about 400 people exploded into existence. The sawmill and adjoining town were owned by the partnership of William McMillan, Al Williams, and Hamilton Salsich. One difference between the Goodyear and McKenna operation was the type of railroad each developed. While the Goodyears chose the larger standard gauge equipment and developed 77 miles of lines, the McKenna sawmill operation developed 61 miles of narrow gauge logging lines. This is the best photo of one of McKenna's locomotives and was taken at one of their lumberjack camps. The photographer, Charles Van Schoik, has his camera set for a delayed shot and is in the photograph, lower left corner, third man in, wearing a derby. Apparently, he was timing the photo because he had just checked his pocket watch in his right hand. This is a clearer shot of a similar narrow gauge locomotive. This is another photo of a McKenna lumberjack camp. Note both men are wearing different kinds of rubber boots, and there is a hand dug well behind the man on the left. Plus there are two pigs to the right of the men, just above the railroad tracks. A third photo of a McKenna camp shows three men on the right, in the foreground, sitting on a three-wheeled railroad inspection car. It was hand-operated and explains how the photographer traveled the eight miles from the town of McKenna to this camp. Many of the same men from this camp photo are in this woods photo. This is what they called a landing, a place where the logs were dragged by horses or oxen right next to the railroad line so they could be loaded on flat cars and hauled to the mill pond at the sawmill. In one section of McKenna's railroad, they developed the most concentrated logging lines in Jackson County and possibly in all of Wisconsin. There are almost 10 miles of logging grades in one square mile. In this area, there is a railroad grade about every 200 yards. The area is flat and was full of large trees, conditions which must have made it both easy and worthwhile to construct the many grades. A possible clue to the reason for so many lines is that the McKenna mill was able to saw logs that were up to 60 feet long for construction jobs like bridges. Compared to the standard 16-foot logs, 60-foot logs would warrant the shorter skidding distance for the sake of the oxen or horses. Once the trees were cut, the logs were loaded on flat cars and brought to this mill pond. Where is the mill pond? Under all the logs. The dark narrow band across the center of the photo is the trestle bridge for the McKenna Logging Railroad. Just moving onto the bridge from the right is a locomotive pulling at least seven flat cars of logs. In this photograph, we see the mill pond bank opposite the sawmill. Notice the ramp created by a layer of tightly laying diagonal logs. There was a set of tilted railroad tracks just above that log ramp. Loaded flat cars were switched onto those tracks, the retaining chains were released, and the logs would roll down the ramp into the mill pond. Here we see what it looked like between the unloading ramp and the sawmill. In the center of this photograph, we see the McKenna locomotive shed. It's where they housed and repaired their two locomotives. The Wisconsin Valley Division Depot is the small building on the right center. 100 years ago, the view back across the mill pond from the locomotive shed would have looked like this. The mill steam power plant was located in the larger white brick building against the mill. Note its tall chimney topped with a spark cap to prevent the much dreaded forest fire. To the right of the sawmill, is a conveyor ramp for moving waste wood into the refuse burner, which looks like a farm silo and is also topped with a spark cap. Between the refuse burner and the mill pond was a white brick building 
had housed a pump to force hot water through a network of pipes on the bottom of the mill pond, which kept it from freezing over in the winter. The planing mill is to the right of this photograph and is also shown on the right center of this photo. The planing mill also had its own steam power plant, as is evident from the high smokestack that barely